Welcome to Seize the Mains by Raj Malhotra's IS Academy. I'm Sirbi Sardana and I'm taking this daily answer writing initiative from Monday to Friday at 9 p.m. Here in Seize the Mains, we learn how to write answers for UPSC Civil Services exam. We take previous year questions and sample questions of UPSC Civil Services mains. If you are a state civil services aspirant, then this initiative will immensely benefit you. The special part about this initiative is that you not only learn to write answers with us, but you can also share your answers, send your answers to us at the given email ID in the description and get them evaluated by our experts entirely free of cost. So uh, beginning with day 25, of seize the mains as always we'll uh, we are uh, displaying the question for tomorrow that is for tomorrow's discussion so that you can reflect on this topic this issue and you can also try writing answer on this and send your answers to us in the next 48 hours that is by 9 pm of 16th march so the question is from gs2 it is uh, it is according to the schedule that we follow that is also there in the description important international institutions agencies and fora their structure and mandate. So as you know that the Russia-Ukraine crisis is going on and United Nations Security Council was in was very much in news apart from the other organizations, NATO, etc. So uh, we've taken this question because uh, India is now a member of UNSC, a temporary member for two years. India's two-year tenure at the UNSC offers huge possibilities for enhancing India's multilateral standing and reshaping its traditional approach. Comment. So you have to tell about whatever you think about India's membership at the United Nations Security Council and how it will benefit India. How should India leverage its position now? So this question has to be answered in 250 words for 15 marks. Beginning with today's discussion, it's day 25 and according to the schedule, we are taking uh, a topic from GS paper 1 that is social empowerment, communalism, regionalism and secularism. This part of the paper is the most sensitive one and the part that concerns most uh, uh, aptly, most closely with our democratic functioning. So the question is. Do you agree that regionalism in India appears to be a consequence of rising cultural assertiveness? Argue, answer in 150 words for 10 marks. So uh, this is a previous year UPSC mains questions. This, uh, this was asked in 2020 by UPSC in civil services mains exam. So since uh, regionalism as a topic, it has many variants to it. It has many contributors. So regionalism has contributors like culture, race, ethnicity, or, you know, just language or the economic background. So there are many contributors to regionalism uh, that you learn about in your society part of your syllabus. So here UPSC has taken just one point every one or the other year UPSC does this thing that it takes just one determinant of regionalism and it frames a question around it. So as you can see this question has been from, uh, formed around culture, cultural assertiveness. So you have to answer from this perspective and since the directive here is argue so you have to take a stand here and take a stand by giving valid facts and data. Uh, if you have any sociological data that this is rising or that is decreasing. So put that in, uh, put that on the paper so that your argument is strong. You have to take a stand, but you can follow uh, uh, by a, uh, your conclusion by, a, by giving a way forward. So moving on to writing this answer. So as always, we'll begin with an introduction. An introduction is a conversation with the examiner. And what is this conversation about? It is about the things that have been talked in the question. So you make everything that is there in the question very clear. So here there are two keywords. One is regionalism, the other one is cultural assertiveness. So in our introduction, we'll talk a little bit in detail about both these keywords. So uh, let's begin and see what is regionalism. Regionalism, as we all understand, it is a form of identity that is based around a geographical region. For example, it could be for a village, for a city or for a state. Or it could not even uh, be an officially recognized geographical boundary but people might want this boundary to be uh, officially recognized for example as we see in the demand for separate states or linguistic states so people residing in a particular area come together form a community that are already a part of community and they come together to assert a, sp a specific kind of identity and to attain power so that is regionalism in india everything is interlinked your history your culture traditions and based on this which kind of people are located in which parts of India. For example, tribal people are located in some separate parts of India, some like affluent people are located in particular pockets of India. So 
everything is interrelated history culture traditions your geographical location everything is interlinked in india so culture which also includes your tradition your language culture forms the most important part of regionalism or the assertiveness for regional power in india so that's why this question is in place let's see what are the what is the definition of regionalism that we have here let me read this out for you so regionalism is the expression of a common sense of identity and purpose by people within a specific geographical region united by its unique language culture etc in indian context regionalism refers to those people who try to assert their love on their region through means of socio cultural and political aspects and to develop their regional power so considering some culture a threat or inferior is called cultural assertiveness rising cultural assertiveness prevents different regions in india to develop cultural relationships with each other and within it because when you're trying to assert your dominance on someone someone else then you cannot learn or amalgamate with those people so rising cultural assertiveness prevents cultural relationships with each other in india to develop so in india as we talked about history culture and economy of regions are significantly interlinked with each other in the past cultural assertiveness gave rise to the formation of linguistic states so this is one of the examples you can choose to write it or ignore it make sure that your answer is in 150 words now moving on to talking specifically about rising cultural assertiveness and how it how it contributes to the rise of regionalism so why do people become assertive when they see something is under threat that is when you tend to attack people when a particular living being is under the is under a an emotion of attacking the other person or another living being that is only when he or she seems himself under under threat so when one type of culture sees the other cultures influencing its own purity that's when culture assertiveness rises or when people from one particular cultural community see that people from our community are not growing social mobility is not there economic growth is not there that's uh, that is the time when they assert their cultural assertiveness and this can be seen in the form of demands for reservation in jobs or uh, you know uh, states coming out with their separate bills and acts in their uh, in their particular legislative assemblies for a reservation of people who are domiciled in their states reservation in private jobs per se so these are the forms where regionalism uh, uh, takes uh, regionalism appears uh, shows itself into the outer world so uh, let's see what is the linkage point that is the point that we'll uh, write before starting our body paragraph so lack of opportunities unemployment slow economic growth resource crunch westernization and migration are some of the many factors due to which people have started to believe that their culture is under threat and hence the rise in cultural assertiveness can be seen this cultural assertiveness urges people to protect the interest of their particular community against others so this is the most important part that not just protecting one's own but uh, protecting one's own interest against the others and resource crunch because overpopulation is there in india resources are limited we have this point as very important here resource crunch does give rise these all economic factors these all cultural fact factors of westernization modernization and the amalgamation of cultures happening due to migration all this gives rise to cultural aggressiveness or assertiveness ness so moving on to the body paragraph these are the points where cultural assertiveness has been seen The first point talks about rising demands for reservation in jobs based on domicile. Example in Haryana and Karnataka, we have already seen that uh, you know bills were passed. Many political parties come to uh, come in power because they promise people that we will protect our this particular culture who belongs to this 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 tradition, or uh, they. they take votes in the name of history so many political parties come in power due to their promises of promoting the interest of particular cultural groups use of traditional cultural heroes to promote contemporary interest especially against people from other cultures so there are many local heroes who have fought very valiantly in past against like against the invaders or foreign rulers who were not good for the specific community so those rulers those heroes are being talked about very much in the present scenario and they are talked about not to motivate the young generation but to but to generate aggressiveness amongst the younger generation against some other particular community who, who doesn't belong to their culture so that has seen a rise use of traditional cultural heroes to promote contemporary interest especially against people from other cultures the belief in sons of soil theory is seeing a rise so what this uh, what happens 
if you train the youth to fight against the youth of some other state or belonging to some other religion or culture that youth that youngster is conditioned to fight for himself for his community and against other people so that uh, gives to a rise in regionalism because how do you promote your interest first of all you secure your geographical boundary either you demand a separate state separate district or you demand that uh, jobs or whatever um, uh, employment opportunities are there in my area will not be available to the migrants so rising discrimination against people who migrate from different places and speak different languages follow different traditions etc this creates a ripple effect as the assertiveness passes on to the native areas of these migrated people and people back home become even more aggressive in promoting their own regional interest example uh, can be seen in the ethnic movements in northeast so, so many times we've seen that there are discrimination held discriminations uh, discrimination against people who migrate from northeast to different parts of india or uh, people coming from south to north of india or uh, moving from north to south of india so that is something that amalgamation does not take place on every level that uh, as much as it should because india is one country we are bound by by one by the ideals of our one constitution so when that does not happen then the people back home people back home in the north east or north india or south india wherever they are they feel that our children are under threat or our community our culture is under threat so i need to secure this geographical boundary i am placed in so this uh, uh, creates a ripple effect not only where discrimination is carried out but back home also so regionalism percolates from one part of country to another and hence people become more assertive regarding their rights and to stay in power so uh, the last uh, the last uh, point is the rising demands for separate states as seen in the case of bodo land vidarbha gorkha land bundelkhand and saurashtra it is seen as a panacea for the troubles of economic backwardness social immobil immobility and above all to stay relevant so with the rise of uh, with the change in the economic structure i would say and the rise of certain areas very rapidly as compared to other areas so the many areas are lacking behind so what do they do to improve so either they migrate to affluent areas where they'll have to start life from the zero level or what they do is that they uh, that they assert the rights of their community to have a separate district or a state for themselves where they can live hap happily and government can support them with the requisite policies or reservation so that is why uh, regionalism is increasing because uh, people associate themselves with cultural identity so this these were the exam examples of cultural assertiveness let's move on to analyze these points here we talk about that regionalism is an amalgamation of different factors this is just what we talked about in introduction and we justify that yes cultural assertiveness is the most important factor that is fueling regionalism all other factors follow these cultural uh, this cultural assertiveness because if you tell people that we belong to the same uh, same family lineage we speak the same language their you know their emotions get erupted very fast as compared to somebody who would uh, whom you would say that okay we work in the same company so economic factors are not that high economic brotherhood is not that high based on employment but this cultural brotherhood is turning into cultural assertiveness and this is one of the most important important reasons for regionalism and other factors that are contributors to regionalism it is giving a strong hold it is it is fueling those factors also so regionalism is a multi dimensional phenomena as it is a complex amalgam of geographical historical cultural economic political political administrative and psyche factors cultural assertiveness is definitely one of the most important factors that promotes regionalism as cultural identities bind people with the feeling of brotherhood and motivate them to fight for safeguarding the interest of their larger larger family cultural community bound by similar traditions language occupation and geographical specificity so the, this is how their cultural identities are bound through traditions language occupation geographical specificity however here is where your conclusion should begin or this way forward should begin however any form of identity should not turn into a justification for aggression and discrimination india's power lies in its universe uh, unity and diversity and such identity based assertiveness threatens the threatens the fiber of united india so talk about unity and diversity again and again because that is what we are about unity and diversity is not about losing one's cultural identity or losing one's tradition to modernization or fusion with other cultures so there is a very important quote by mahatma gandhi regarding cultures 
um, that is your homework you have to quote it down in this answer. So, it, uh, it talks about that all cultures can maintain their identity, their own unique identity and we can have the taste of all cultures while being one united India. So, that's what, that is what the story of India is about. So, here we also talk about what is the importance of cultural identity. See, if you have some heroes of uh, from your tradition or from your geographical area whom you can relate to and feel motivated by. We read so many stories in our textbooks while growing up in school. We are taught about so many local heroes and we feel motivated inherently that we okay we belong to this particular area or that particular person could do could fight uh, these these many people in those times. So, why can't we fight against you know one exam or why can't we get selected in this exam. So, th that is there for our motivation and it also helps us when we face some crisis in life. So, cultural traditions are important but their role should stay in their uniqueness not in aggressiveness. It should not come in the sphere of aggressiveness and it should not threaten the uni unity of India. So, cultural ad identity helps us to stay grounded in life. It provides us with a ready-made community to connect with and examples to relate to when we falter in life. However, fraternity, brotherhood and peace is what we need in our democracy. While one part of India might provide the maximum jobs to the youth, other parts might be contributing by providing grains, natural resources, etc. See, this is a very important part because uh, many in many states, in many areas, wherever you know, why do states want reservation for their people only? Because they think that we are having enough jobs, but uh, we have enough jobs for our, our people. Like if people are coming from other states to, uh, to take jobs in a particular metropolitan city, then our student, our children will suffer. So, these states are very confident enough that they can provide economic prosperity to people of their states. But they do not understand that there are so many resources with uh, so many human resources or natural resources which like other states are contributing to and they help in their economic growth also in their social growth also. So, these states do not realize this particular fact. So, this is the line that there are many states which provide jobs to the youth of India. There are like jobs which are centered in metropolitan cities only in, uh, in India and we all know about these four five cities where jobs are centered. But there are but the other states also have a role to play. Some states might be you know might be there for the scenic beauty, some states might be might be providing fossil fuels or just the natural resources or just food grains. So, this discrimination has to end everybody has to realize that all parts of India are important and we cannot discriminate against one uh, particular type of people or people from one particular state or culture. So, while one part of India might provide the maximum jobs to the youth, the other parts might be contributing by providing grains, natural resources, etc. We need to collectively acknowledge the role and contribution of all the regions and understand as a society that culture does not need to be asserted to be protected. One's culture gains respect when it gives respect to the others and helps towards the collective benefit of humanity. Moving on to the last slide. So, this is your final conclusion that identity based divisions are something that do not belong to the 21st century India. To rise as a global power, we need to inculcate the sense of brotherhood and mutual respect right from school at homes. So, this regionalism should be positive kind of regionalism or cultural identity should uh, for perform a positive role in shaping our identities. So, also the media needs to be sensitive about portraying certain cultures as threatening and boasting about particular cultures. There are so many riots that happen after release of some movies or riots happen because uh, there is some fake news going on in the media or the media does not provide a sensible co coverage. So, the youth has to nudge the media. The media is responsible on its own end and you cannot stop the media from like you know you could uh, prevent one news channel, two news channels, but you cannot prevent the whole functioning of the media. It is the youth of the country that has to take a stand and you need to, we need to nudge the media to provide only sensible content to us. You know, after the coming of this OTT platforms like Netflix, Amazon and all, all the viewership has gone to sensible content because people relate to sensible content a lot as compared to whatever the movies were being released before the launch of OTT platforms. So, now, Whatever the movies that are coming up today or whatever the series that we are watching today, even the advertisements also, they are more democratic in nature and they will get more democratic with time because that is how the youth, the market uh, nudges the media. 
so the youth has an important role to play in nudging media towards producing more democratic content it's the culture that we'll create today that will determine the future of our democracy and help in realizing the ideals enshrined in the constitution so that's a quite a long way forward these are many points that you can add to your answer in providing a way forward the points remain limited as far as culture is concerned there are just 5 to 6 points that remain limited to this answer but how you innovate around them how you give examples and there are many quotes especially of mahatma gandhi that's a homework to you find out those quotes and write it in your answers that you send them to us, that you send to us share your answers in pdf format by tomorrow 9 pm you can download the pdf of this presentation from the description below make sure that you don't copy the answer or don't copy any answers from websites of other coaching institutes we see that uh, there are a lot of answers that we received are copied from websites of other coaching institutes that does not benefit you what is the purpose when you start writing your own answer it will take around 10 or 20 minutes but when you start copying it will take hours so try to write your own own answer based on this knowledge go to the google news column and type regionalism and cultural assertiveness to gain to have more examples for your answer and send your answers to us by tomorrow 9 pm again Tomorrow's topic and a question has been displayed in the beginning of this video. Tomorrow's topic is important international institutions, agencies and fora, their structure and mandate. So see you with another discussion tomorrow. Keep working hard. Prudence is approaching. Have faith in yourself. Keep your preparation balanced. So uh, send your answers to us and take care. See you.